We love to see women supporting women. <laughs> Radical. Greetings, mortals. I'm Marceline, the Vampire Queen. Taylor is a bit out of it. In the meantime, I'm going to share with you five ways bats are awesome for people and the planet. Pest control. Of the roughly 1,400 bat species in the world, more than 70% feed on insects. Insectivorous bats can eat more than 40% of their body weight in insects each night, and many of these are pests that damage crops. In the United States, roughly 13% of crops are estimated to be damaged or destroyed by insects annually, and by eating insects, bats can actually reduce the need for pesticides on crops. Researchers have estimated that pest control services provided by bats may be saving U.S. farmers up to $53 billion a year. Bracken Cave, located just outside of San Antonio, Texas, is the largest known bat colony in the world. In the spring and summer, Bracken Cave is home to more than 15 million Mexican free-tailed bats. These bats eat, among other things, the corn earworm moth, which is one of the most damaging pests to crops in North America. Some of the crops that benefit from bats in this way include beets, citrus, rice, strawberries, cacao, coffee, walnuts, peppers, pecans, cotton, and tomato. Pollination. In order to produce seeds and fruit, most flowering plants need to be pollinated, where pollen from the male part of the plant fertilizes the female part of the plant. And a lot of plants are unable to pollinate themselves, requiring cross-pollination between individuals. Pollen and nectar-eating bats in the tropics and subtropics pollinate both wild and cultivated plants, a process known as chiropterophily. Bats carry pollen further than any other animal, and there are over 500 plants that rely on bats to pollinate their flowers. The saguaro cactus in the Sonoran Desert and the baobab tree of Madagascar are just two examples of plants that rely on bats for pollination. Not to mention, a whole bunch of foods humans love are produced by plants pollinated by bats, including avocados, bananas, chocolate, coconut, durian, figs, guava, mangoes, and tequila, which is made from agave. Seed dispersal. Vast swaths of the world's rainforests are cleared each year for agriculture, logging, ranching, and other uses. But thankfully, fruit-eating bats play a crucial role in restoring those ecosystems, and in some places, bats are responsible for up to 95% of forest regrowth. Fruit bats, as the name suggests, eat fruit, and eventually poop the seeds out, spreading new plant life far and wide. While bats aren't the only animals to disperse seeds, many fruit-eating animals tend to stay close to where they live. Not so much with fruit bats. Researchers have found that fruit bats travel and carry seeds great distances, flying up to 95 kilometers away from their roost looking for food. In Ghana, researchers studying straw-colored fruit bats found that bats help spread the seeds of fast-growing trees, which help make the right habitat for more plants to grow. The bats in these forests have the potential to replant 800 hectares of forest annually, which is not only good for the environment, but the locals who can utilize the timber, fruit, and improved soil condition the bats create. Fertilizer. Speaking of bat poop, or guano, the stuff makes excellent fertilizer. Found in caves throughout the world, bat guano, much like bird guano or manure, can be used to enrich soil. Guano can be used as a soil conditioner, natural fungicide, and as a compost activator, helping to speed up the process of decomposition. For those curious, bat guano contains between 11 and 16% nitrogen, 8 to 12% phosphoric acid, and 2 to 3% potash. Oh, and you can use bat poop to make explosives. Guano is high in potassium nitrate, also known as saltpeter, which is used in the manufacturing of gunpowder and explosives. The year is 1863 in Hill Country, Texas. It's the midst of the American Civil War and Union blockades lead to a shortage of munitions, among other goods. The Confederates are desperate and they turn to nearby bat-filled caves for the solution. Confederates mined and processed bat guano in a large kiln to produce saltpeter, which was mixed with sulfur and charcoal to manufacture gunpowder. We have here everything we need. Saltpeter, sulfur, charcoal. For gunpowder. According to one source from 1864, it took 100 pounds of bat guano to make just 4 pounds of saltpeter. Sounds like a shit job if you ask me. Medicine. Bats often have a bad reputation for carrying and transmitting diseases, notably viruses like rabies, but they may also hold the key to treating diseases. In the last couple decades, there have been three coronavirus epidemics, and all of these viruses appear to be related to coronaviruses found in bats. Researchers are now studying coronaviruses in bats to try and better understand these diseases and develop better treatments and vaccines for the future. Speaking of which, while bats are carriers for many viruses, they don't often get sick from them like humans do. 
They also rarely get cancer, and their bodies naturally limit stress-related inflammation, which causes a host of problems in humans. Their biology is quite bizarre. By studying bat biology, researchers may be able to find new ways to combat health problems in humans, although this research is still in its infancy. The saliva of the common vampire bat contains anticoagulants, proteins which prevent blood from clotting. This helps these bloodthirsty bats feed continuously from their host without disruption, but they've also been studied as a potential treatment for strokes. While this novel treatment fell short and never passed clinical trials, who knows what else we might still learn from our fantastic flying friends. Despite all the wonderful ways bats help people and the planet, bats around the globe are under threat from habitat loss, climate change, invasive species, disease, and other stressors. And without action, populations will continue to decline and many species will go extinct. Currently, 113 species of bats are considered vulnerable according to the IUCN. 85 species are endangered and 23 species are critically endangered. Furthermore, there are 236 species that are considered data deficient, which means we don't know how at risk these species are. The good news is we all have a part to play in protecting my children of the night. Organizations like Bat Conservation International, Merlin Tuttle Bat Conservation, and the Bat Conservation Trust are working to educate people, conserve habitat, and better understand bats and how to protect them. Follow these organizations on social media or consider donating. Bat Conservation International even has an Adopt the Bat program. Might I suggest adopting a Mexican free-tailed bat, which was discussed in this video. Oh, and Merlin Tuttle has stickers and other merch, and a gallery full of absolutely amazing bat photography that you can check out for free. Links to all of these organizations can be found in the video description. If you enjoyed this bat chat, give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Bye!